you know, a lot of their um, environmental things. So it's not where it's perfect, but mm -hmm. I, I'm always a the glass is half full sure. person, you know, and I like to see improvements. Um, so yeah, they're, they're all, 93% of the world's largest companies are doing this now. Um, 82% of those use the Global Reporting Initiative Guidelines, which is my area of expertise, which is what I do uh, training around the country. Um, I've trained people at the World Bank, I've trained people from the United Nations, from the large corporations, Coors Beer. The fun part is going to different parts of the country and going to some of these host organizations, like Coors in Golden, Colorado. You know, we got to to, to be there and have free beer and <laughs> uh, but learn about what they're doing and they're doing some they do a sustainability report it's pretty cool because they they're looking at as Sylvia was saying you know that circular economy they're looking at their farmers they're looking at what their farmers do how they grow the grain how they use water all of that is important to their production um, how they treat their water in Golden Colorado they have to make sure the water that they use in their plant, when it goes back out to the stream, is as clean as can be, is at the right temperature. And in fact, one of the social things they do is they, they clean the water for the city of Golden. They process the water. So there's, there's a partnership there where they benefit the town and they also benefit the environment. So um, that's an example of a, co you know, a company that is doing that. Um, assurance. Okay, so they put out these reports and you go, isn't this pretty? And I have read hundreds of reports. I like to, you know, I mean, Friday night, glass of wine. You know. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's, I like to learn what companies are writing and saying and, you know, and some of them are just amazingly beautiful reports. Okay, there's a lot of um, some people would say greenwash. Um, so so the, the idea is that you have both positive and negative information because if you put only positive, it's just PR. And once you put out the things that are your challenges, the weak spots, people tend to believe you more. You know, because you're being upfront. You're saying this is a challenge for us. If, if uh, you know, UPS is another good example. They have been doing sustainability reports for a long time. They do a really good one. And they have some real cool graphics. But they also talk about their major challenge is fossil fuels. And they're, you know, they have these planes and trucks. And the issue that they worry about is the carbon tax that governments around the world are going to be in, you know, um, legislating carbon tax. So what's that going to do to their business? That's long term stuff, that maybe even short term. So their model of business. Without, if they were never to say anything about fossil fuels, you'd go, whoa, what's wrong with this picture, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's something to look at. Now, you say, do I believe it? Do I believe what's in that beautiful report? Just like financial statements have an auditor come in, if you're a publicly held company, you have to have, by law, an audit by independent CPAs. That has to be. Now, that gives you a level of assurance that those financial statements, and I'm going to go into accounting ease here, um, that those financial statements are fairly presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Doesn't mean they're perfect, doesn't mean they're error free, but in general, you know, we're going to say that materially these things are fairly presented. So you have confidence that, that num those numbers have been evaluated. For the sustainability report, you say, well, how do I trust it? They're not required to do a report in this country. They're not re required to have assurance, but 59% are now having their reports assured. So it's, it means there might be more business for accountants, you know? <laughs> but but it's, it's and, and other groups, they're, they have sometimes their greenhouse gases are um, assured. They have an outside auditor look at and recalculate those numbers. So you feel good that greenhouse gas number is a good one. Could I ask a question about that? How good is the assurance industry? How good are the people who do that? And there's a variety of people who do it. So there's the environmental engineer types who do the greenhouse gas stuff. There are the accountants who do the, um, who can do a variety of things. They can do greenhouse gas computation. They can also do, well, does this, or does this report 
adhere to the principles they say they're using. So there's a lot of play, and I'm on a AICPA, which is American Institute of Certified Public Accountants Task Force, that deals with sustainability assurance. So it's, a, it's an up and coming area for accountants. The big four accounting firms, they, have spe they all have a division on sustainability. Mm -hmm. And so, so they're really <clears throat> seeing this as going to be a, a big coming thing for them. Okay. Um, reporting, uh, the most widely used is the GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative. Um, and I, I guess I'm biased, but I think it is the most adaptive. It has any organization, any size, any location can use this. Uh, whether you're small, you know, individual proprietorship, large corporation, can use it. Um, and there's a, there's a um, link to the website so you can learn about that. And then that's me. I have a book I've written about sustainability reporting. Getting started, it's not very long. It's about 100 pages. Um, it talks about if you wanted to do the sustainability reporting using GRI. And what I've done is I've gone through and picked, I read a lot of reports. I wanted an example of every single indicator that could be reported on throughout the world. And I put the examples in the book. And so um, I read through a lot. And some of them were not so good, you know, but I wanted good examples. And um, I found some. I did. For every single one, I found an example. So um, I would highly recommend if, you, if you're interested in measuring, you know, if you're going to do stuff, you want to know how well you're doing. And so this is a way to do that. Uh, it's, it's a, it is a communication device. Internal management, I view it as one of the strongest pieces uh, or tools for internal management. How are you doing economic environment, social what does that mean for your business? How can you then get better in all kinds of ways? If you care about your workers, if you care about your contribution to society, your place in the community, then these are things you need to look at. Um, and the economic, you, you can't, you know, we can't sustain life without money. You know, I, I wouldn't want to see somebody who doesn't. But, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but it, it drives a lot of stuff. But that is the end of my presentation, formal presentation. Um, you have copies of your book with you today? I don't, but you can get it online. If you, you can get it off, you can find uh, on mm -hmm. my website a link to Business Expert Press. Um, one more thing about reporting. Even if you don't decide to report uh, this year, it's very good to see what the indicators are. So that again, you, you use what other, what the majority considers are impactful uh, indicators. The reason corporations are doing more and more of it is that they know that soon enough from voluntary they will become mandatory. So uh, there are people working on integrated reporting, which means you are not going to report only on financials. You are going to report all these all these other sustainability uh, aspects. So uh, Monsanto might be doing it for that reason too, because again, at some point it will become mandatory for publicly uh, owned uh, companies. Another way to see if they are really committed to sustainability, if they if you see if they report every year. So if you look uh, at the Global Reporting Initiative, you might see X or X reporting one year and that not reporting in subsequent year. Well, that's uh, a problem, right? And others, yeah, they want to show trend, they want to show improvement. Um, so uh, it's, and, and what is good about it, uh, again, there will be universal. So like I mentioned, global goals, we should also have global ways of measuring what we're doing in order to solve the global problems that we've created. Um, so now we would like to move to, yes. I have another question about the reporting guidelines. So do the sustainable reporting guidelines, do they both measure a company against the, um, against its competitors and the rest of the, you know, other businesses and also against <coughs> itself, you know, like you said, you always want to see improvement. So are there kind of like the two, you know, are there ways or is it all, like how are you doing as compared to the rest of it? How are you, how are you doing, or or is it all? Are you, 
compared to how it should ideally be. You know what I mean? What are you being measured against, or is it all three? Well, typically a company says, I'm going to report, mm -hmm. and, I've, and I only report on what's material to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't have, there's like, I don't know, 50 plus indicators. And so mm -hmm. if something, if for example, I have a company and child labor is one of the social indicators. Mm -hmm. If I have no way connected to ever worrying about child labor, mm -hmm. I don't need to report that. If I don't ever worry about um, product labeling, if I don't have a product where I worry about labeling, I don't need to report that. So, but your question is, they typically report mm -hmm. and measure themselves, progress over time. Okay. If people, other people wanted to make you can you can set benchmarks. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering if there are like some businesses that are already going to be handicapped and in the weeds just because of the nature of the business they are, as opposed to others. And so, I suppose you would have. If you say, who do I want to compare? Mm -hmm. If I want to compare UPS and FedEx, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. are two companies that would be comparable to compare mm -hmm. against. Um, their emissions, because mm -hmm. they're similar in terms of their transportation, etc. So emissions. Total emissions intensity, you know, mm -hmm. per some denominator. Um, but across, there might be some industry averages mm -hmm. that you might be able to look at and benchmark and set goals. But typically, each company is is looked at individually, okay. and then um, across time. So there aren't necessarily like benchmarks that all businesses are supposed to try to meet, or no. even within industries. No. Okay. Because there's so many different sizes, you know, if you sure. think about, yeah. um, but if, you, if you're looking at three biggies, you know, three yeah. big companies that are similar, you do the same thing in financial accounting. You would say, I really, I want to look at similar mm -hmm. types of companies. And is there one place where you can find all the sustainable reports yeah. that have been published? Yes, yes. the Global Reporting Initiative, GRI, oh, just type right. in okay. database, okay. GRI database, mm -hmm. and you will find there's over 30,000. Okay. Um, the city of Bloomington is in there. I worked on a project to do the city of Bloomington three years ago, 2013. It's on Bloomington's website. It's also on the GRI's website. Mm -hmm. The Indianapolis Airport is also there. So you can do a search for individual companies, or you can just start with the letter A mm -hmm. <laughs> and go through mm -hmm. and look at all these companies throughout the world that are, you know, you send it in to them and you say, Here's my report. So, Fall State University has four reports. And they've been doing one every year for the last five years. So, so you can try to find a company that's like similar to your own, at least to try to compare. Yes. And also on this database is by industry, by sector, mm -hmm. by what, size. Would, yeah, what common re things that they report. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can do that. Well, there's also uh, stock indexes that mm -hmm. allow you to, to compare because they give points like Dow Jones and Sustainability Index, Life or Good, which is a London-based. Mm -hmm. So you have a parallel mm -hmm. to the well-known indexes that go for sustainability. They rate them. Mm -hmm. There are some rating yeah. uh, organizations, Dow Jones Industrial or Dow Jones Sustainability Index. Mm -hmm. Uh, FTSE like for good. Yeah. Um, there's several raters that do that, mm -hmm. and they tell you kind of a black box of how they mm -hmm. did it. But they have they have sectors, mm -hmm. and they have uh, industry leaders. Unfortunately, VW was one of the leaders, mm -hmm. and and but, they're all, but they yeah. lied, and they took them mm -hmm. off. I mean, they just removed. <laughs> it's like there was this, you know. Cross and skull, you know, skull and crossbones, <laughs> right there where VW used to be, yeah. and so um, that has a backlash, you know. But yeah, you can, you can. Thank you. When you say the city of Bloomington, yes, talking about government offices, yes. or are you talking about mm, not, residential and all? No, that? it is the city government. City government. It was okay. city hall, mm -hmm. and that's the organization, <laughs> and it's economic, <clears throat> environmental, and social impacts, <clears throat> according to the GRI. So. Yeah, this question is about the GRI guidelines. Um, within one of those indicator categories, do the GRI guidelines specify the uh, unit of measurement that is to be used and then the method for actually calculating the impact? Yes. Okay. And so, for example, like if you, under the environment, there's a, uh, a topic area called materials. So if you're a manufacturer, Ooh. that would be relevant to you. And you'd say, well, what's your major material that you use? 
and by weight or volume. And so that, but then there are some recommendations on how to do uh, some other things. So they don't say you have to use this method, mm -hmm. but here are some recommendations and there's leeway. So, but they do say you should report this by volume, by weight, or in accordance with you know the IPCC greenhouse gas protocol. That's how you should measure greenhouse gases. So yeah, and water, water discharge, water usage. So so there are the, the guidelines. There's there's two manuals. There's a kind of principles and standards intro, and then there's the implementation manual, which is 300 pages. But it's great. It's great. So if you're really going to do it, that's the manual you want to start looking at for all those recommendations. How to? It's really a very good one, and it measures both your direct and indirect impact. So it's not only my little guy. Yeah, Monsanto. I'm surrounded only by forests at my headquarters. No. What do you induce in your supply chain yeah. and outside of your supply mm -hmm. chain? Uh, that's what you need to, to report. Supply chain has become a big deal uh, for these corporations. And, and in the reporting framework, there, there's a supply chain set of metrics in economic, environmental, and social. And um, the environmental one is asking, mm. do you have criteria that you use to select suppliers on an environmental basis? Do they meet your criteria? You know, if you say, well, they're not environmentally uh, protective, et cetera, by these criteria, we, we reject them. Same thing with social. Do they have criteria for child labor? Do they have criteria for, for human rights? Do you go through and assess your suppliers using a specific set of criteria? And also, do you have a mechanism for reporting these things? Um, some of these companies will say, we had, we had, you know, 300 suppliers, and 10 of them we rejected because they did. They had some problems with child labor, or they had some problems with human rights. They didn't meet our level of, you know, criteria of, of who we deal with. So supply chain, you know, is it's really important because if you have influence around the world, you're going, you're stretching it out. It's not just you, but it's who you deal with, and. Economics to say, I'm not going to deal with you if you don't meet my rules. So, are these things weighted in some way? Because it seems to me like with Monsanto, again, you know, if they've got this really awesome recycling program and yet they're destroying the food system of the world, I don't understand how they can come out, even if they're doing good things in a lot of areas. You know, their very mission is something that a lot of us, I think, would consider to be not sustainable at right. all. Right. So how can they get any kind of good <coughs> sustainable score? It, it depends on who's looking, who's reading. You know, it, you as a person reading and saying, I don't believe in an entire mission. You know, so from the get-go, no matter what they do, if they recycle, until they start to change how they produce their products, how they sell their products, um, then it's not going to change your mind until they start making. And by putting these sustainability reports out there, they have NGOs, uh, you know, uh, environmental groups, uh, World Wildlife Fund, looking at what they're doing. So there is that room to weigh in on their activities by putting that report out. Because these people show up, these organizations show up, and these, these companies need to have stakeholder engagement meetings where they discuss with the public what it is they think is important. And when the public, and, and these NGOs, not for government, you know, non-governmental uh, organizations, show up to represent individuals that can't be represented. So it's not perfect, and you're right. There, there are companies, I think, I wish they'd go out of business altogether. You know, and we say, but they're doing a sustainability report. Tobacco companies. I know. I know, and that they're legal. They're legal. Yeah. So, you know, but you said tobacco kills, and, and then at the same time, um, they're putting out a sustainability report. So, there are a lot of, you know, there's a lot of kind of conflict there, but at the same time, if we're on a road to changing what they do, how they do it, that's better than nothing. That's, I mean, you then have a voice, I think, by them putting this out there. They put themselves on the line, you know, 
Is, is social license to operate things that we have to think about, you know, how, what, what's the best way to get them to change? Some of them might really change. I mean, I'm not saying Monsanto, uh, but some of them might really change for many reasons because there are all these pressures from customers. There are pressures even from and pressures from employees. Some of these corporations won't be able to hire people. You know, especially the younger generation is so dedicated to this, uh, to the cause of sustainability that they will not work for this company. And I think those who want to keep these companies for a for a long time in business are aware of it. Uh, so. Uh, yes, they will never convince uh, uh, some of us, but they might have their own corporate customers that will be very demanding. Unilever, again, a huge corporation, but they seem to be trying hard to do sustainable uh, uh, business. They are partnered with Ellen MacArthur Foundation, so they're very interested in making this concept of circular economy work. And I'm not pleading for them uh, uh, again, but there, there are some who are really trying to get on this transformation. So Unilever might not buy from Monsanto anything if they do not comply with their sustainable uh, demands. Um, and some of them will just disappear. They will not change, and uh, that's it. Uh, if we get to do only local farming, um, uh, uh, or get the organic way, so then Monsanto will not be. So if we shrink the industrial farming, there will be no customers for Monsanto. Um, or maybe they won't be after uh, they are bought uh, by the... Um, or they'll change how they do business. Or they will change, yeah. Or they will break up in different companies, and some will be the good ones, some will be the, the bad ones. Uh, but again, the, the, the most valuable thing is that they're looking at these things and not only at uh, shareholder value and that they're putting themselves uh, out there for everybody to, to see. And there is nobody better than the non-profits that are always after this uh, corporation. But again, then they have uh, statements and they have reality. And they know that uh, it's a big problem if reality doesn't, mean, uh, uh, doesn't meet uh, their statements. The backlash is tremendous, you know. So, so that that's a problem. For them. So, um, so what we want to do now is to talk about what you do. Uh, we also have prepared a lot of success stories that we know about, but if we don't get to them again, you'll, you'll uh, be able Yours to are. read them yourself. Yours are important. We want to talk about what you do. Um, so. I think Jeff is in a hurry, so you want to... Well, I'm it? good for the rest of the day now. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Hello, you going until 5? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we'll, we'll come to your place. How will we do it before there? Okay, you, you want to go first? Um, <laughs> She's if anybody, yeah, anybody, if anybody has, a, has a presentation, we can put it up, we can or just you, talk. We need to go first because it. you have to maybe leave a little early. Yeah, I don't have a presentation or anything. No, we, we really didn't necessarily want anybody other than us to do formal presentation. Okay. Because we want you to speak from what you do. You know, I think that's as informative as anything. Um, so, uh, okay, well, okay. introduce yourself and... Uh, okay. Can I turn off the projector and present it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just a little... Just turn it off, and then we can turn it off. Um, Sylvia, I did have a brief to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Just, just for the heat. Okay. Um, I'm Stephanie Kimball, and um, I, I guess I'm wearing a lot of different hats. I wasn't sure what to expect coming here today, but um, uh, the first one is I'm co-chair of the Green Sanctuary Task Force at the Unitarian Universalist Church. And that's what most comes to mind as you're talking about this. We signed um, the Paris Pledge a couple of years ago, which is um, a, a pledge to cut our, our um, energy use by 50% by 2030 and to be carbon neutral by 2050. And we, at this moment, have very little idea how to actually do the second part of that, and nobody really does. And so we're trying to figure that out. We're investigating 
how we can use permaculture to rethink how we do things. Um, we already have a, a solar array and we're looking to increase that over time. Um, we do, uh, this isn't really part of that, but for the last, I don't know, 10 years we've done clothing swaps twice a year to try to get people to shift from consuming at, at malls and whatnot to <coughs> actually just sharing and um, exchanging things. Um, as far as our, our um, and, and we're looking at how we can use the grounds for producing food and um, introducing passive solar kinds of things on, on our buildings. There's a whole, you know, it's, it's hard, as a lot of you know, um, when a place wasn't built with these things in mind, retrofitting is, is a real challenge, but we're, we're working on that. We're also in network with other congregations through Earth Care, and I happen to be um, the convener of Earth Care at the moment. That's an organization of 20-some local congregations that are addressing climate change um, through reducing energy use and reducing, helping their members reduce their household energy use. Um, there are actually six congregations now in Bloomington with solar arrays, um, which is pretty exciting, and at least 30 in the state. And a lot of those are facilitated, have been facilitated by um, grants through Hoosier Interfaith Power and Light, and that's my next hat <laughs> on the board with HIPPL. Um, and uh, so that's a, a statewide organization that's working to bring faith communities together to um, address climate change, um, reduce energy, and increase sustainability. So we're trying to build networks and get out and using faith communities mostly because um, that's a way of reaching people that aren't normally in this conversation. Uh, it's a whole other audience. So that's kind of an exciting venue. Um, but locally, um, I'm also working with some uh, people on um, a new initiative, actually, uh, through the Center for Sustainable Living, well, through SIREN, which is the Center for Sustainable Living, um, uh, called Solar for All. And the idea is to uh, leverage the, the um, buying power of, of uh, you know, there are lots of people who will be going solar over the next um, couple years and we're going to